Welcome back to the Mental Health Minute. I'm Dr. Emily Mayfield, a licensed psychologist. I want to thank you for watching this video and being a part of the Mindset Therapy family. So for today's video, I'm going to discuss why you might be scared to send your child back to school. This is a decision that has no right or easy answer and can keep you in a constant state of worry, stress, and anxiety. We're going to discuss where that anxiety and stress is coming from. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel as a way to grow the reach so that more people can be provided valuable information on their mental health. You can also turn on the notification bell to be notified of the next video when it's uploaded. I'll post a video every Tuesday and Friday, so check back soon. Also, stick around to the end to hear the tip of the day. These are quick tips on ways that you can start to improve your overall mental and emotional functioning. So during these unprecedented times, many parents are forced to make the tough decision on whether they send their child to school in person or virtually. The decision will be difficult for many, regardless if their child is just starting school or is in college. The decision is complicated by the presence of so many factors that must be considered. As a parent, you might even feel forced into a decision based on your work schedule and the inability to work from home, which means that your child might have to go to school during the day regardless of what you are most comfortable with. How do you decide giving all the unknowns and how do you stop worrying when no decision seems right? So let's start first with recognizing worry about this difficult decision is normal. Worry is a cue there's something in your environment that needs your attention. Once we identify the cue, we can start to implement a plan. However, worry can also be problematic. When we worry about things outside of our control or worry about the same thing repeatedly, this is unhelpful worry. Worry is also problematic when it leads to physical symptoms. So if you're feeling scared about sending your child to school, this is likely due to activation of the fight, flight, or freeze response. This is the system in all of us that is activated when we are faced with an actual danger. When we're in a danger situation, the fight, flight, or freeze response is turned on so that we can manage that situation. Within your body, you'll experience increased heart rate, faster breathing, muscle tension, release of adrenaline, and digestion stops because it's not needed in that moment. Our body is focused on preparing for the danger while turning off all unnecessary systems. This is fear in response to an actual danger. What anxiety is, is the same system being turned on in response to a perceived danger. Perceived doesn't mean it isn't real. It simply means it's not staring you in the face at this moment. An example danger would be a car speeding towards you as you cross the street. A perceived danger is worried about something in the future that may or may not happen. So when you start to feel scared about the decision you must make regarding your child going to school next year, this is anxiety that has been activated by your worry thoughts. You fear the unknowns. You want to make the right decision but you don't know what the right decision is. To further complicate the decision-making process, information changes daily and even several times a day. You may think that you have come to a decision only to get new information. So you likely have noticed the physical symptoms of increased heart rate, changes in your breathing, nausea, and muscle tension in the last several weeks or months as you thought more about what you would do with your child's schooling. This is because you have activated the fight, flight, freeze response with the worry. So some other symptoms you might be experiencing are low patience, limited frustration tolerance, fatigue, and just an overall lack of motivation. These are all in response to that fight, flight, or freeze system being turned on constantly when it should be turned on rarely or in those true danger situations. Because there's so many unknowns when it comes to the decision regarding in-person or virtual schooling, you find you worry about an increasing number of topics and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight. You think of one thing, which then leads to several other new worry thoughts to consider. You may even think if you can prepare for all possible outcomes, then you're actively problem solving the issue and will be able to make the right decision. While it might feel like you are problem solving, you are likely overthinking. 
So overthinking is when there's no actual endpoint or you think over and over about the same thing. If you find yourself overthinking, ask yourself what solution you're looking to find. If there is no decided endpoint to your worry, then you'll continue to overthink, which will keep you anxious, and the fight or flight system will remain activated. This will lead to you feeling less patient, more irritable, and just overall more tired. As you process whether to send your child in person or virtually to school next year, it's important to remember that there is no right choice, only the choice that you think is the best right now. When you overthink, you're looking for the right answer, when there isn't one and there likely never will be. So to stop the overthinking, which increases your anxiety and keeps you focused on being scared with sending your child to school, decide and start to enact a plan for that decision. Continuing to overthink will only keep you in the unhelpful worry process. Remind yourself that you can change your mind in the future and that while you are moving forward with a plan, this doesn't mean you're stuck with it. So when you can stop looking for the right decision, you can find the decision that is best for you right now. Trust in yourself and that you will do what you think is best for you and your family. Don't forget to practice self-care during this difficult process to ensure you are well mentally and physically to make the tough decisions. Check out some of the other videos that discuss worry and anxiety more. There's information on how to tell the difference between helpful and unhelpful worry and how to manage your unhelpful worry. So now for today's tip of the day. Take your desk down at home. Many people were forced to work from home with short notice. They may have had to set up a desk and workstation in their living room or kitchen, and this has made it difficult to separate work from home. Make a plan to take down your desk at least once a month and more often if possible so that you can take the work out of your house and just focus on your time at home away from the expectations of work. If you enjoyed the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Have a good day.